sister that were beat, that were raped, that were treated in a gutter somewhere this morning. And I'm not exaggerating. The opioid overdose has passed 100,000. So if there's 100,000 dying, think how many is on drugs. 100,000 dollars dying. There's millions. There's a lot of there. You can be seated. Every young man under 25, would you stand, please? Every young man under 25, would you stand, please? A lot of fine young men in here this morning and a lot more back there working in junior church. All you guys, look at me this morning. For every one of you, for every one of you that are standing here this morning, there are literally, literally thousands of young men your age that are out on the street that are homeless. You see them walking all the time. My heart breaks for them. We pass them coming to church. And, and you, I mean, you say, well, you can't judge. No, but you can just tell, can't you? Yeah, you can just tell. I mean, it's, it, I don't know what it is, a certain look. I them guy walking out, and you know, and I saw a guy walking in, down this road yesterday, the day before yesterday, coming this way. And uh, uh, he, his pants were way down to here. He had no shirt on. And he's walking like this, just sort of jerking and everything. Man, my heart went out there. That's somebody's kid. That's somebody's brother. That's some mama's little boy. And for every one of you boys standing in here this morning that are saved and helped, happy, maybe you fuss at your mama for making you come to church, or maybe you don't like the rules, or you ought to thank God every day of your life because there are thousands of your age that are in a, in a home somewhere where they're being mistreated, uh, being uh, sexually, physically abused, and treated like a dog or animal. That's all because of sin. Thank Lord, you can be seated. Let me tell you the difference between us older people and younger people when it comes to sin. So you see the front door. When, when you kids grow up, all you see is the glitter and the glamour of sin. All you see is uh, the commercials, the videos, the movies, and it makes it look so good. Let me, let me tell you the difference between you and us that have been where you've and are now where you've not been. You see Delilah cunning wild, causing Samson's thrill. We see him blind and shorn and bound, grinding at the mill. You see the son at first, feeling fit and fine. We see him later at his worst, feeding with the swine. You see Judas with a smile, counting out 30 coins. We see him after a while, bursting out his loins. You see David on a throne with a great nation to run. We see him all alone, weeping o'er his son. You see Jacob running fast, looking cool and mod. We see him 20 years later, limping back to God. You see Absalom so fair, fighting to be free. We see his rebellious hair hanging from a tree. You see just Lot at the gate enjoying Sodom's fame. We see him when it's too late. Sharing Sodom's shame. We see, you see, you, you, you see the living room of sin. You, I, we see the closets too. You see its front yard full of flowers. We the backyard view. You only see sin's bright today. We see its tomorrow's share. You see its outer garment. We the underwear. You only see the sign up on the, the side of the, the road that say, shows a young man, he's got a, Ice cold beer and he's and, and drops of cold and he's frosted and he's got his arm around a beautiful young lady and he's got a, a beautiful car, a brand new Corvette and that that's the part of sin you see. We've lived long enough to see the back side of that sign where his teeth are out and his neck's red and she broke his heart and she's done gone off some been through a bunch of different quote failed relationship and kids scattered around all the country for the for the state to pay for. You see just the beginning of sin. We see what happens after a while. I have preached funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral and stood here and saw families in here weeping. I just had one the other day because of sin and what sin will do. And I'm going to tell you this morning, people, you kids especially, sin ain't nothing to play with. Sin is nothing to play with. You know, uh, you, you play with sin like playing with a snake. Uh, you, it's, it might be fun at first, but it'll get you. I heard about a boy who had one. He had a pet snake. There is no such thing 
as a pet. Snakes cannot be domesticated, you nut. Uh, they, they don't have no feelings for you. Again, it, it's, uh, don't get mad at me. It's not my fault. You're dumb enough to have a snake for a pet. Uh, this guy had a, a, a snake around his arm, and somebody said, ain't you scared of that thing? He said, no, I've been, I've been doing this for a long time and all that. And sure enough, that day come when that thing went right there in his neck, killed him. And that's what seeing is. You play with it. That first person that gave you that first can of beer was the devil. You think who it was in your mind right now? Think right now who it was in your mind. Remember that? I do. I remember it. And that was 8,900 years ago. You're, some of y'all was just the last few months or maybe years. I remember the guy that took me riding around Lake James and said, Here, Danny, have you ever tried one of these? You ever tried one of these? And I said, No, I hadn't. And he pulled out the one. He said, here. And I remember I, I, was, I, I wasn't saved. And I took it and I put it to my lips like that and just put it to my lips and I put it back down. Because I'd seen what alcohol done to my daddy and I was scared of it. And I said, oh, you wasn't brave enough? That's right. I'm still scared of it. I'm, that's why I'm scared of a rattlesnake. I'm scared of a copperhead. I'm scared of a cotton mouth. I'm scared of a boa constrictor. I'm scared of playing with sin like playing with a snake. Playing with sin is like playing with fire. Playing with fire. You can't ever like play with fire? What's the old saying? If you play with fire long enough, you get burned. And that's the way sin is. You know, when we, when you, when you as a kid, all kids probably do this. They're fascinated by a light, a socket in the wall. All kids do. And you are, almost every kid, they'll fool around over there and they'll have a coat hanger and, and, you know, just messing around with it like that right there. You know, that never does that. That's why I start preaching on Sunday morning. Don't, don't don't worry, they're here. <laughs> you just plead the blood. Plead the blood, please. I'm doing it. Listen, uh, every kid, I remember I done I stuck a knife or something in one one. Pow, it got me right there. And I thought, whoa! And that's like playing with sin. What makes you attracted to that? Why would you want to stick a knife in a light socket? Well, in the, anyway, what would make a person? I don't know. We're we're driven, we're pulled towards it. In our natural state, we are pulled towards sin. You don't have to teach somebody like sin. It's, it's in us. It's in us. It's attractive. A fire is attractive. A snake is, is fascinating. Why? When you see a snake, hey, you're a snake. All right. And you come out and, and you'll take a stick and mess with it and try to turn it around like that. I've done it. I still do it. If I seen one today, I'd do it. And, and, and then I'd cut his head off. Uh, but uh, that's right. Now, you know what the Bible says? Only good snakes. Are... That's right. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I, it's it's like sin, sin like that, sin like that. I think of over and over and over and over how this truth is illustrated in the Bible. Way back yonder in the Garden of Eden, our great, 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 great grandma Eve in the Garden of Eden. You know what she did? She stood there that day, the first woman on earth. And Adam, her husband, was, I don't know, a few hours, a couple of days, a few days, older than her. And uh, he, uh, uh, he, God made Adam first because he didn't want nobody to tell him how to make him. And uh, he, uh, he, he made her, him and, and he made her. You can laugh. That's a joke. Everybody ought to be able to take a joke. People take pre- preacher jokes all the time, not laugh at them. They're funny. And they make fun of her. It's funny. It's funny. Don't, get so, don't be so woke. Don't be a weirdo. Uh, don't be a liberal, man, where you can't even laugh at yourself. You take yourself too seriously if you can't take a joke on yourself. Amen. You ain't hot snot. You're a cold booger. That's right. Uh, but anyway, that's right. That's what we are. That's what I am. So anyway, Eve's standing down there, and she's looking around, and God told them. He said, you can eat them. Any one of these three. Ain't that the way the Lord does? You can do all this stuff. It's all right. But that one right there, leave it alone. So she's out there one day shopping. She wasn't wanting to buy nothing. Just looking around. That's why you husbands are broke right now. Uh, they're just looking around. Somehow or another, that looking around costs a lot of money, don't it? <laughs> you get that credit card bill in the mail. Uh, but uh, they, she's, she's over there, and all of a sudden, buddy, there was a creature appeared there she had never met before. I personally believe, I don't believe he looked like a snake then. I don't believe he, I believe he had uh, wings. And I believe he, had, he was attractive, brilliant, a bright light shine and begin to talk to her. And he said, Eve, 
Hath God said, you've not eaten every tree of the garden? Uh, and, uh, and, and Eve said, no, we're not supposed to eat that. God said, don't eat it, don't touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said, you shall not surely die. And you remember the first person that told you that? Remember the first person? I do. This boy I used to go to school with in high school, he, he looked up to me somehow or another. I was, and I was like in the 11th, 12th grade, and he was about in the 8th or 9th. And he always wanted to be a hippie. And I quit wanting to be a hippie when I, I never did really want to be a hippie, but I liked music. And when I quit the band and everything, all I did was play ball. And, but he wanted to be a hippie. And, and I don't know, so, sort of a weird kind of guy. He thought it was real cool to be hip, hip, hip and everything. And, and we'd come in the lunchroom every day and he'd want to, He'd um, he'd want to. We used to do it there. We stand in there and shoot basketball at lunch, and he'd shoot me corner. I said, I said, shoot free lunch money, and uh, I beat him every time. I don't know if he ever beat me, but he kept on. I said, Well, you stupid enough to do it? Oh, let's go ahead. And I take his lunch money, and he thought I was something else, and he got his license, and he took me over there down behind over toward that lake one day, and he pulled out one of them weird looking cigarettes. He said, You ever tried one of these? I said, no, I hadn't. He said, you want one? I said, no, I don't. Now, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. Do you remember the person that first offered you one? Listen, I, I remember reading about this girl's testimony. Listen to me. This girl's testimony, and she gave this long testimony about how she had had been on drugs and how it ruined her life. She wound up maybe sleeping in a phone booth somewhere. Back when they had phone booth, her, her hair was all, she hadn't had a bath in weeks. She had been raped. She had uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Her life, was, and she, her life was horrible. She lived on the street and she said, the first, I wish to God that the first person that ever gave me drugs would have taken a gun and blow my brains out. That's what she thought about. Starts out little, playing with sin. It starts out with this little drink, little drink. People, they, I, there have been people made fun of me because I'm a teetotaler and I believe it and preach it. And I always tell them this: you can never become an alcoholic if you don't take that first drink. Amen. You can believe whatever you want to. If you think that's wrong, see where that gets you. One day at the judgment. But I'm telling you, you'll never be a drug addict if you don't smoke that first joint. You'll never be a drunk if you don't take that first wine or that beer. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to learn not to play around with sin. You know the story. Eve took a bite, just one bite, just one bite, and gave her husband and he did it. It wasn't a big thing. They didn't go shack up with somebody else's wife or husband. They didn't get drunk. One bite of playing with sin, and a curse came on the whole human race. Ladies and gentlemen, don't learn, learn how not to play with sin, kids. Don't play with sin. It'll get you in big trouble you'll never get out of. Then there's all the way through the book of Genesis. There was Lot who went down to Sodom. And Lot made three mistakes. He sat in Sodom. He settled in Sodom. And then he sinned in Sodom. First of all, he, he sat in Sodom. He went down there and sat down. And you know what Lot should have done? You know what Lot should have done? Lot should have got his wife and his girls and said, we're moving. We're getting out of this hell hole. That's what he should have done. Oh, I'm going to go back to my uncle Abraham and say, look, we may not make as much money. We may not. We may have our income cut, but I'm not raising my kids in a bunch of hell like this right here. I'm not doing it because whoever you, whoever you let your kids go to school with, they're going to look up to them people and they have a very good chance of doing the same thing them people are doing. And he should have, instead of looking at money, instead of looking at, at, at being comfortable and having a big retirement and I, he should have said I'm not raising my kids here I'm getting the girls uh, get your husband uh, get get mom get get everybody we're leaving we're moving out we may have to live out in the country somewhere and raise our own food we may have to do whatever we got to do but we're not and you know what lot did they played with it played with it until you know the tragic story of how how his daughters uh, messed up and his sons-in-law he, he just they mocked him and they laughed at him and and even Lot's wife, when they were running out of Sodom and, and the fire was falling on Sodom and God said, don't look back. For some reason, that woman turned around. I've heard all kinds of explanations that. I don't know. Uh, maybe she was, was wishing her kids was with her. Maybe she was missing her women's meeting. Maybe she was missing uh, their, their phone, the internet, TV, and YouTube, and everything. But she turned around and bam, turned into a pillar of salt. I say to you this morning, sin ain't nothing to play with. 
Sin ain't nothing to play with. You think you can cover up your head at night, get that phone out, and fill your mind and heart full of filthy sin and wickedness and cussing and naked people and everything. You know what you're doing? You're playing with something that's going to bite you one day. Nothing to play with. Playing around with sin gets you in trouble. David, in 2 Samuel 11, same thing. David never started out to mess up his whole, uh, his whole future. David never thought out uh, about uh, maybe having a man murdered. And, and losing four kids to pay for it, like you restore a lamb fourfold if you take somebody's lamb. David didn't realize the price he's going to pay. But the Bible said that David, one day when they all went to battle, David stayed home. And you know what he should have been doing? He should have been out there leading the charge. Let's go, boys. Let's fight the battle. Now, here's what I, here's what I think. Here's what I think happened to David. He sat him one day and he thought, you know what? I've won a lot of battles, and I've won a lot of victories, and God's been good to me, and I killed a giant and everything. You know what? I, I've been listening to other people, and other people say, you ought to just take some time off once in a while. And I think I'm just going to kick back and, uh, this summer. I'm going to take 15 vacations and miss a lot of church, and I'm going to just chill out for a little while, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I think David didn't realize just a little bit of sin. Just a little bit of sin suddenly turns into a whole bunch of sin. His first mistake was staying home when he ought to have been out fighting. People, I'm going to tell you all something this morning. I've been through some hard times. I've been through some bad times that she mentioned a minute ago. And I've had times where people tell me, they said, Danny, you need to just take a break. You need to just take a break uh, from preaching. You need to just chill out for a while and sit down and listen. And you know what? There's something down inside me said, no, I'm scared to do that. I'm, I'm scared to quit. If I ever quit, you might not start again. That's where a lot of people mess up. I, I've had people tell me. They say, well, I'm going through a divorce right now, preacher. And I just, I'm just going to work things out before I go to church. For heaven's sake, that's when you need to be in church every time the doors are open. Matter of fact. Everybody here, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to fuss at y'all. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not a legalist. But matter of fact, everybody in here and everybody that ain't in here needs to be in church more and more and more and more. We need all this we can get. We need all the help from the Lord we can get. The devil's coming in the back door. The world's gone crazy. The devil's taking our country to hell. It ain't no time to be backing up and taking it easy. Brother, playing with sin got David in trouble. I, it, it hurts me for all the people that I know used to be really faithful to church. And I'm not fussing at you. I'm not. But you know what happens. The first thing you do is you quit Wednesday night. And the next thing you know, it's Sunday school. Then it's Sunday night. Then it's Sunday morning. Because you underestimate. You underestimate the power and the pull of that. Oh, you brother Danny, you're a elite. You think everybody has to go to church every time? No, no, I don't. I don't think you have to. You don't have to. What bothers me is you don't want to. That scares me. It's scary because I've seen so many go down that road. You know what I'd do Sunday morning if I woke up and didn't want to go to church? I'd put my clothes on and go anyway. I'm scared. I don't want to give the devil an inch. Amen? Bad enough with the church. Let alone being out there in that world all the time. And David looked up there, and the Bible said he saw a woman. Now, I, it don't say, I don't believe that's the first time he ever saw her. My opinion. I don't believe he just saw a total stranger and said, we go get her for me. Probably, he knew Uriah. Probably him and her had maybe seen each other down the store. He thought, wow, she's, that's a beautiful lady right there. And wow, that's King David. He spoke to me. and Maybe she smiled. Maybe he smiled innocently. How are you? Maybe. I don't know this, but I got a sneaking feeling deep inside that they had met her. And he sort of knew. He didn't, he didn't really know what her name was. And it grew inside of him and grew inside of him. And then when he saw her out there taking that bath, he said, who is that? And they said, that's your eyes wife there. And he said, go, go sit, right. He's gone to battle. See if she wants to come up and have dinner. Played with it. He played with it. The truth is, you ain't got no business out eating dinner with somebody you ain't married to. If you're married. Amen. I know it's old-fashioned. Call it what you want to. You better be careful playing around. 
just innocently, little talk here, little talk there, it turns into big talk real, real quick. I, what I'm saying right now is so anti media and anti woke and anti liberal and anti uh, I don't care brother if they ever one think I'm crazy I know exactly what I'm talking about I know what God said and I know God said you play around with sin you you play with fire you're going to get burned you better get burned some of y'all need to cut off some of that relationship you fool around with Achan in Joshua chapter 7 after they'd had that big battle the battle in Jericho Come up this little bitty city. And wasn't nobody there. Just, he said, I, I just, I just a handful of us take care of them. Send us up there. And Achan went in there. And you know what he done? He saw some gold, some silver, and some nice looking suit of clothes. And he knew that God said, don't touch none of that stuff. It's all contaminated. It's all rotten. I'll take care of you. Give you what you need. Leave that stuff alone. And he said, when I saw it, I wanted it. That's the best thing about TV. You know the worst thing about TV and your phone nowadays is it makes you want something you ain't got. You think about all the times you see something on your phone. Boy, I'd like to have that. Boy, I'd like to do that. Boy, I'd like to know them. Boy, I'd like to go to this place. It, it, it's designed for that. It's designed to make you think you're miserable and you're pitiful and everybody out there in the world's having a big time at you and you need to go out there and do some of this. That's what the devil's plan is with TikTok, YouTube, uh, hype the TV shows. Uh, it's designed to make you want something. That's what commercials are. You put that stuff on there and click commercials to make you want something you ain't got. So you go out and buy it. And, and Aiken looked at that and he said, oh my goodness. I looked at and I watched these country music awards and, and I watched the uh, Emmys and the Grammys and my goodness, they had on a suit just like that. And my goodness, look at that ring and oh my, oh, God, look at that. And he's, he's, he's rich and I want some of that. And so he grabbed it and took it. And there's been a lot of Christian people just had a little offer for a little fame, a little fortune. I've known, I don't know how many, I don't know how many in all these years that thought they as talented and can sing and let it go to their head. And next thing you know, they say, well, they're going to sing on American Idol. They're going to audition for American Idol. People, we got kids in here that can sing. But I'd throw up if I thought one of them was going to be on that bunch of mess. Amen. Amen. We're, that's not our job. We're not trying to be celebrities. We're not interested in praising the world. If God give you a beautiful voice to sing and give you talent, use it for the glory of God, for heaven's sake. You don't want to use it out there in the world. Lord, you don't want to go to Gatlinburg and do an Elvis act or something like that, like Jeff, uh, since he got famous like Sunday night. I mean, listen, I'll be, you'll be seeing him over there. He'll be having sideburns down to here and a guitar and shaking that leg like that. Just Don't. It's, oh, you can sing. You need to be in Hollywood. Don't believe that bunch of bull. Lord have mercy, no. If you got a kid that's talented, tell him to use it for God. Amen. For the glory of God. Yes. Amen. That's right. That's what Aiken did, buddy. And you know, he, he wound up, kids wind up on drugs. You know how he wound up on drugs? Taking that first joint. You know how he wound up on drugs? Hanging around people that do drugs. Did you know the fentanyl that they sell on the street in Morganton today is 100 times more powerful than morphine? When I hurt my knee and I had to have knee surgery and I didn't know what they'd done to me. And I woke up and they said, well, we had to give you a shot of morphine, preacher. And I'm telling you, it, I, thought, whew, I, I felt horrible. I thought, why would anybody want to feel like this? I, don't, I, want to, I want to know what I'm doing. Where I'm at. And I remember thinking I tried to pray. You've heard me say that, And I couldn't pray, y'all. I tried to pray and I couldn't. I'd say, Lord. I'd be drifting off somewhere. And I, I thought, whatever that was, cut me off from God somehow or another. And I, I, I don't know this, but I think in your psyche and in your spirit... Alcohol, drugs, all that stuff will cut you off spiritually where you can't even find God if you wanted to, if you ain't real careful. Now, God help you today. I, I think when you, if you're sincere, you're drunk, you call on the Lord, He can hear you. But it sure does hinder you coming to God. The prodigal son. Let me ask you something. How did that prodigal son know about that far country? How did he know there was such a thing? He'd been talking to somebody. 
He'd been listening to something. He'd been reading something. How'd he even know there was a parking? Some traveling salesman come through and has a picture. Look at here. <whistles> Lord have mercy. Is that the way the girls look in the far country? Yeah, they all look like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what they all every, every girl in California is beautiful. Have you ever been to California? I've been a bunch of times. I've seen about two pretty girls and ten million. Whew. They'd make a freight train take a back road. And, and you know what? Uh, it, it's true. It's true. And and they ain't all pretty. Wish they all could be. You know, you know, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. If you ever seen them, you wouldn't. They pick out one or two and put them on TV and make you think it's all like that. That's what they did to the, the, the prodigal son. Oh, yeah. Come on down here. He said, they ain't but two girls in our community. Lord, one of them ain't got but two teeth. Nothing. She's a humpback every time she runs in the house. She runs up under the porch. She said, I don't know what. I can't find no pretty girls around here. And you know what? It just got, he thought, whoa, they all look like that. There you went. Now, there's where you mess up. There's where you mess up. You start thinking, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. These guys at work, and they're talking about the party, and they're going to the beach, and we're going, there's where you mess up, right there. That's what'll get you in trouble. You say, well, we only got one life, Brother Danny. Shouldn't we enjoy it to the fullest? You're exactly wrong. You do only have one life. That's why you ought to stay out of that bunch of mess. It's going quick. Man told me one time, he said, you only got one life, so you should live it to your fullest. You only got one life, so you better live it for God. Because it's going to be gone quick. And you'll, you'll have plenty of time to be totally happy forever and ever and ever in heaven. And as he went and he messed up, brother, listen, you ever heard of that? Remember old Steve Irwin, the croc hunter, whatever he was? <laughs> what? I remember people talking about him. And I, I don't think I ever watched that show. I saw a couple of little clips of it or something. But people say, brother Danny, have you seen that crocodile hunter? And I said, no, what he said, he goes down in the water and he wrestles crocodiles. And I remember thinking, he is a nut. That guy ain't got no sense. Oh, no, he knows exactly what he's doing. I don't care what he knows. You don't wrestle with an alligator, people. There's better ways to get famous or rich than that. If I want to make a lot of money, the last thing I'd do is go wrestle an alligator. Sun or teeth, that, that, that bite you. they say, I mean, them things bite your head off. And they don't like you. And, and, oh, he would go down there and, and he would get down there and he'd say, no biting, no biting. Now I'm sure that crocodile understood that. And you know what that boy done? He kept playing around. He kept playing around. He kept playing around. He kept, and you remember, the news came out. Steve Irwin at 40-something years old has died. And a stingray shot one that, that dark poison in his chest. Yeah. Killed him. Didn't even take an alligator. You know what that guy did? He played around one time too many. You know what the kids that got overdosed right here in our country, in our town the last few weeks, you know what they done? They played around one time too many. One time too many. You play the fire, you get burned. You play the snake, you get bit. You play with sin, it'll ruin your life. Maybe there's somebody here this morning and you're just playing with it. You don't have to confess that to me. I don't want you to come up here and tell me what you do. I don't, I don't care. It's not, that's nothing to me. You bring it to the Lord. And you tell the Lord what you've done wrong. And you say, God, I'm this. I don't care. I might have to break his heart. I don't care. I might have to Break her heart. I might have to. I might have to change jobs. I may have to cut off some friends. God, I'm done with this. I'm quitting playing with sin today. Today. The the biggest mistake you can make is thinking I'm smart enough. I know when to quit. This will never happen to me. Ever drug addict had ever died thought that. They thought that same thing. You, are you listening to me? You ain't no different than nobody else. You think, I can stop, I can handle it, brother. You don't know me. I've got a good head on my shoulders. I if you got a good head on your shoulders, you'll leave that stuff alone. And the fact you don't shows you ain't got too good of a head. May God help us to quit playing with sin. I stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. If God spoke to your heart here today, everybody bow your head, close your eyes. 
Thank you for being attentive this morning. I want you to listen carefully to what I'm getting ready to say. Every person here this morning, if I had to ask you a question, you've been playing with sin? Have you been playing with sin? I don't know your heart and I don't want to know. But maybe God has felt, you felt something while we've been here this morning. Feel a little conviction. Young man, young lady, is God dealing with you? We're going to pray. We're going to give you the opportunity to come. Why don't you come? Why don't you just get down on your knees here this morning and say, Lord, I'm not going to do this no more. I'll do whatever I got to do. I'll change crowds. I'll, I'll change jobs. I'll do whatever I got to do to get away from this. Do that right now. Father, do what ought to be done right now. Speak to hearts. Thank you for people who are honest. Thank you for people that have an honest heart want to seek you. Lord, help every one of us here this morning to learn not to play with sin. Oh God, do it for Jesus' sake. Save that one which is lost. Touch every single heart. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. They're singing. You come. Join these on the altar. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now. Just get out of your seat. Amen. Amen. Let's just get in this altar. Come on. Come on. Crowd around this altar this morning. Say, God, I don't want to play with sin. Join these. Come on. Come on. Get out of your seat. Young man. Young lady. Would you come right now? Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's so much more that I would do. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Come on, Amen. Amen. Come on now, please. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Give me words to sing and say. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use my hands. Use my feet. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back. But I can live for you today. Young man, come on, come on right now. Let's get this off. There are Let's so many things. Amen. God's going to help you today. Time's running out. Time is short. Let's do business with God while we can. And Lord, I've even failed you. Amen. If life was Amen. just a yes. show, I yes, think I'd carry mine. But you can't refill. The hourglass of time. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Give me words to sing and say. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use my hands. Use my feet. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back, but I can live for you today. So here I am. Use me, Lord. Give me words to sing and say. Let me love. Let me live. Let me give myself away. Use my hands. Use my feet. All I have is yours complete. Let my life be a reflection of your grace. I can't go back, but I can live for you today. Playing softly this morning. Amen. A lady with a broken heart right here, y'all. Folks over here struggling with sin. Other other place up here in this altar. Life is sometimes. I'm glad there's a God. I'm glad there's a better place to go when we leave here. Look, you don't have to be a loser. You say, I'm just doomed. It's just meant for me never to get nowhere. I'm a drug addict. I'll be a drug addict for the rest of my life. You don't have to feel like that. 
it's not true. It's the devil lying to you. The devil's lying to you. The devil saying, you, you'll never be happy. It's never going to work out for you. You're never going to have a happy marriage. You're never going to have... The devil will lie to you. He's a liar. The Lord don't talk to you like that. The Lord's a gentleman. The Holy Ghost don't talk to you and make you feel terrible like that. Don't you let the Lord help you today. Give in. You know what will get you in trouble? It's holding on to that thing. It's like that little girl put her hand in the cookie jar, you know. And she had that cookie. And she said, Mama, I can't get my hand out. I can't get my hand out. And she said, well, let go of that cookie. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That, that, see, you ain't going to get it out until you let go. And that's the way some of y'all are right now. You ain't willing to let go of what's holding you back. God help you do that before it's too late. Amen. Thank you, Karen. All right. While these are finishing up, everybody listen up. Tonight is going to be special. I'm going to bring you some lessons tonight. You're going to learn. We've been having some really good Wednesday, uh, Sunday night services. So come back tonight. Bring a friend with you. The choir will be singing. I'll be preaching. And then on uh, next Saturday, not this Saturday, but the next, we're all going down to Midview Baptist Church in Kings Mountain, Brother Mike Rice Church, and we're going to have a big back school service. So we want everybody to go. The bus, the trip's free. It won't cost you no gas. You get free supper. Where are you going to get that? And get to hear one of the best preachers in the country, Brother Cody Zorn, and that'll be uh, next Saturday. Not this Saturday, but the next. And I'll, I'll have the address um, if anybody wants to just drive your car. You can GPS and drive. But I think we're going to take the big bus and everybody just have a good time in the Lord. Uh, the big pusher out there. All right. We're looking forward to that. And then uh, 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 camp meeting's coming up. Revival, our trip to Rockingham. I'll be preaching revival down there. I don't know. I think it's the 27th or 4th, 5th, something like that. And uh, a lot of the girls are out of school. They're going to go, Lord willing. And uh, we're going to have a big time in Rockingham. Those three nights, and everybody's going to come that night, that Friday night. And then they're all coming up here for the camp meeting. So we'll have a big back-to-school get-together from camp, camp, all the kids that went to camp uh, next Saturday night. I'm excited about that. Can't wait. Amen. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer. Everybody uh, turn around and be friendly when we dismiss. Continue to uh, 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 pray for Dax and them. I think they're on their way in right now. And so uh, y'all pray for them this morning. They're coming home uh, from New York and ask God to bless them and bring them home safe. And let's pray God to get in this thing here tonight. And give a great move of his spirit. Let's pray. Amen. All righty.